my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. Hi, hello. Today I'm going to be talking about the new 2017 Kylie Cosmetics launches. This is the vacation edition. I had told myself I wasn't going to buy it, mostly because when it launched, I missed the initial launch and Kylie was very adamant about how they weren't going to be restocking it. It was a one-time release. Of course, it was restocked when there was demand for it, when they sold out initially. It created more hype around the collection and when it was restocked after the initial launch, people went bananas, of course, and bought it because they were under the impression they wouldn't have the opportunity to. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the end, but for now, I'm just going to get into the products themselves. This is like a review, a tutorial, everything all in one. Let me know if you guys like this type of video by giving it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hi, we have an amazing family here on the internet and I would love for you to be a part of it. I literally just realized my nails match my choker. The first thing and the thing I was personally most excited for is the Take Me On Vacation eyeshadow palette. If you guys watched my Movers Sold $4,000 for Me video, you would know that my Movers wound up stealing every single one of my Kylie Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes. So when I purchased all of this, I treated myself to getting the peach palette again. I was just curious if this palette would be similar in pigmentation to this one, just because um, I personally like the smaller Kylie Cosmetics palettes better than like this palette per se with more shades and stuff in it. So I was really curious as to whether or not I would like a palette with even more colors. And here you've got two, four, six, eight, sixteen shadows. That's sixteen shadows. And I think that this palette costs like fifty-ish dollars. I'll make sure to list the price. Um, but I have to say, I think that the brush is really bad. I don't know if you guys can tell. It's like fraying a little bit, especially on this side, you can really see it. There's like a frayed, I don't know if you can tell, but um, the brush is total trash. I honestly would never use that and I'm pretty disappointed with it, um, which stinks because Kylie did a really good job on the brushes. I think from her holiday collection, I had gotten those as well, but I really, really, really enjoy this palette. It is what is on my eyeballs today. I started off with this color, which is like a nice matte sort of sienna shade, and I just buffed that into the crease and blended it out with a crease brush. Then I went in with more of like a bronzy color. I know that they have names on the back, but you guys, I just, I, I can't with all of that right now. It's like a really beautiful warm tone bronzy brown. So I packed that onto the outer portion of my lid. Then on the inner part of the lid, went in with this gorgeous, gorgeous, like, look at that. It's so pretty and metallic, like a goldeny color. And it was really, really pretty on the lid. It was a very easy look to put together. I think the colors look gorgeous. The metallics are really nice. Those shimmers are just beautiful, but the matte colors are really good as well. At least from what I have tried, I wound up going under the eye with that kind of burnt sienna shade just to really add some definition down there. I highlighted the inner corner actually with the next product I'm going to talk about, um, which is the Skinny Dip palette. And this shade is called Glow Up. And I just thought it made a really nice inner corner pop for this look. And then I highlighted the brow with a mixture of the these two colors. This actually is really, really nice and looks like really bright under my brow bone, so I'm a major fan. This color was just a bit too dark for me for like how fair I am right now. I'll do some swatches as well while we're here, just so you guys can see, but I mean, I am fairly impressed with this. I have to say, I didn't have super high expectations. The mattes can be a little bit crumbly in swatching, but I love them in application, and that's just one pass. Those colors are relatively light, so we'll move into some darker shades. I really am excited about this blue. I haven't swatched that yet, but it just looks so promising. Um, I was between wanting to do a really bright look with this and like just something very neutral and pretty. And I always go for the neutral look over the bright look just because that's my personality. But look at that. Look at how gorgeous. They swatch really, really well, but I think they look even nicer. All right, so on to the next row. And I love this color again, just that gorgeous, like bronzy, metallic y color. I think I'm doing the swatches backwards this round. So I started out down here. I cannot with this shade. It's so pretty, but all of them are just really nice. Like it's one pass. I'm not digging into the shadows. They're really yielding like good color payoff. Then just for the rest of these, I'm actually super excited about this shade as well. Like doing a look with that. It seems very promising. And again, like not a dud. 
I cannot find a single thing wrong with this palette except for the brush. I'm pretty disappointed in that. But if this resocks again, which I do believe that it will, again, I'll talk more about that. Um, I would highly suggest getting this. And if I could only get one thing from the collection again, it would 100% be this eyeshadow palette. It is the best Kylie has launched to date. And that concerns me a bit that I'm saying that because I've heard a lot of mixed opinions. But I also know that Kylie Cosmetics is known to having batch issues. And there are products that I love that friends of mine hate, and I'll try theirs, and I'm like, this is not the same product. I've also repurchased products and then not been identical in color, like just been ever so slightly off for some reason. So that is pretty concerning, um, and I don't like that there's a lack of quality control with this brand, and I feel like that sounds very negative, and I don't want this to be like a negative review or anything, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but 100% if you can spend your money on one thing grab this eyeshadow palette because I love it next up Let's talk about this skinny dip like bronzer and highlight palette. I wound up kind of contouring slash bronzing today I put on a cream contour before I filmed I basically had already done like my brows and my foundation and everything And then I topped off my cream contour with this sun kiss bronzer It looks I think a little bit lighter than it is an application. It's actually a really nice bronzy brown color perfect for right now and I'm pretty fair but I really want to look kind of sun-kissed and glowy and warm there is a bit of shimmer I don't know if that translates very well on camera but I don't think that the shimmer really shows up in application. I didn't use this highlight on the cheeks today, I wound up using something else, but Sunkissed is a gorgeous, gorgeous golden yellow color, and I did use it on the inner corners of my eyes, so I feel like that counts. I really like both of these products, they feel very buttery, I had no blending issues with the bronzer. There are things that I think are comparable, if not better, for the price point, but I do think that it's good, and there is a ton of product in this. It looks identical to the ColourPop, um, duo so if you guys see one that is similar on the ColourPop website you may just want to spend your money on that because they're so much cheaper. I think that Kylie and ColourPop have the same factory because a lot of their packaging is the same, a lot of the products are the same. I wound up using the blush from the Coco Collection palette. I bought this a little while ago and never showed it on camera so I just used this blush right here. It's just a very standard peachy pink color. I liked it didn't love it. Actually, just for good measure, I'll swatch this too because I don't think I ever have. So if this is still available, here are what the swatches of this look like. I know it's not in the vacation collection, but just in case. I do actually like it a lot. Um, I think that the bronzer is a little bit powdery and the blush is also kind of powdery, but there are these swatches from the Coco Collection Cheek Palette. In case you are curious, I know it's not technically, again, part of this collection, but um, it's something I haven't used on camera before, so I thought I would really briefly talk about it. What next? What next? I really want to talk about these Ultra Glow Powders. Two of them are already out of the little box doodaddy that they come in, just because sometimes with the longer nails, it's hard for me to get these things open, and it can be awkward on camera. The first color is called Fiji. I don't even know if I've looked at this one. Ooh, that one would have gone really well with this look as well. So Fiji is a really gorgeous, like, champagne-y color. Um, so these are loose highlights, and they are called the Ultra Glow Loose Powder Highlights. Again, this is Fiji, a gorgeous, bronzy sort of highlight. I think that would look beautiful on a more medium skin tone, or even just to warm up your face without being, like, a stark white highlight. Like, sometimes that look is just so pretty. Tahiti is a bit more of like a duochrome peachy color. It looked a little bit darker, so I was kind of afraid of it. So that's it right here. It's just so pretty and metallic. Hi, Lily. I need to like catch you guys up on my animal situation because I literally run a zoo right now. I fell madly in love with this cat. Let's, Lily, come on. Well, madly in love with her brother Lupin um, at an open adoption and decided to take him and his sister in. I'll explain the entire situation and how they came to live here and why they're living here and all of that kind of stuff in a different video. But anyways, so that right there is again Tahiti. Just wanted to make sure. The color that I use today, I'm literally obsessed with. I like it so much. It's really, really, really blinding. And normally I feel like I maybe go for something a bit more subtle. So this is not only a change for me, but I'm obsessed with it. It is so stark white though it's like the whitest most shimmery like ow it's literally blinding it's blinding and it's gorgeous I'm actually quite impressed with these um the one that I used on the cheeks today went on very nicely I felt like it looks super pretty in application it gives like a very very highlighted almost wet sort of look to the face that I'm super into for summer. There are two glosses and a lip kit, um, all three of which pretty much I didn't use today, and then I'll talk about the lip product I did use. 
These are the glitter glosses and both of them are just like jam packed with glitter, obviously. I think that's kind of the whole thing with this collection. Just a lot of sheen and glitter and metallics, which can look really cool and is really like a nice change up. You can pretty much add glitter into any part of your routine. So this color is called Glamour and it is a really bright orangey metallic. I feel like actually it would go really nicely with this sort of lip color just to jazz it up a lot. The other shade is called Glitz, so Glitz and Glamour, which I really like. Um, this is more of a champagne -y shade. It's a little bit like bronzy. Actually, they're very similar. I prefer Glitz personally. Can you guys see that? They're very similar, and I feel like they might give a similar effect on the lips. For me personally, I would pick this one over Glamour, but I wanted to try them both. This lip kit is called Junebug, and this looks different from any lip kit I've ever seen Kylie do in my personal humble opinion. It is like a bright purple, but can you guys see that? It's just really different, and it's also not a color I've ever tried before. It's like a fuchsia purple though, so I feel like maybe it would be a bit more wearable. Um, I really like the color, and I I love the word June bug. That's actually my best friend's dog's name. Ironically, this is also her favorite lip color to wear, and I'm obsessed with the fact that it's literally called June bug. So I really like the color payoff. I love the Kylie lip kits. I can't say enough good things about them. I know some people have different opinions. I again have had some like misses with them. Some of them are better than others. Overall, though, like the original Kylie lip kits, I've always really liked. I have one of her newer ones, though. It's called Apricot, and it's so so bad. Patches off the millisecond that you put it on. The liner is really bad and breaks very easily. This is what I'm saying though with the quality control. It's like I say that but I also don't ever talk about it because I know that there are people who really really enjoy that color and who have had like better products than I have. Sometimes I feel like these curated collections are a better hit um, in terms of like you get what you really get and like what you see other people swatching is really what you're going to have because I feel like the numbers are smaller, they're not creating as many, like when they're in batches it's like the first release, the second release, the third release, but that's just been my experience so far. The small collections I've just had better quality with and that I've seen more continuity in like the shades and the textures and stuff like that as opposed to the kind of everyday like you can buy it all the time products but that's just me. So then there are two lip kits that are not like lip kits but they're like sets of liquid lipsticks. This first one is the matte liquid lipstick range and I've just knock them all out. This is called Naked, and I really like these, but the frosted tube makes it kind of hard to tell what sort of color it's gonna be. It's a very pretty, just beigey nude color, super light and wearable. This color is called Birthday Suit, and in comparison, it is just a tiny bit darker. They're very similar, and Birthday Suit just appears to be a bit warmer than naked. Next up we have the shade Commando. This is what I'm currently wearing on my lips today over the Candy K lip liner. I really like this color a lot. It is a gorgeous, slightly darker peachy nude color. I felt like it paired quite well with Candy K. I wasn't even thinking. I wiped off the swatches and forgot I had one more. This is called Bear and this is actually a color I wear on the daily, like not this exact one, but this sort of shade where it's just kind of like a peachy brownie everyday nude. Okay, so apparently the matte velvet liquid lipsticks are the same as the matte liquid lipsticks. Like it's the same shade and everything? That is so weird. Wait, why is that? Why would it be exactly the same shade? That literally doesn't make any sense. So the shade that I actually use on my lips today was Commando, the matte velvet liquid lipstick version, um, which is what I thought, and then I was like super confused, and I thought, oh, I must have used the matte one, but this one is really cool. These have a more soft, sort of velvety feel if you've ever tried like the NYX soft matte liquid lipsticks think that sort of texture sort of whipped and very comfortable at least so far for me I've worn it for about an hour and a half now so here is the matte velvet of naked I mean these are going to be exactly the same shades and bare once again Okay, so here's kind of where I stand with this entire collection. I think that there are really good products and the first chunk of this video was dedicated to the ones that I think are really good. And actually, I guess that I don't think any of these products are bad. I have a lot of issues with the fact that the two lip sets were literally the same colors, just different formulas, because it's not like you're releasing like a set of glosses and then the matte liquid lipsticks. 
both the velvets and the mattes at the end of the day both dry down matte it's not like it's a different finish it's just a slightly different texture they're still gonna look matte and sort of seamless on the lips you might be thinking, well, like, Loie, why did you buy both sets? I actually just bought the Vacation Edition bundle, which included all of this, and I just think it's really, really, really cheap to do two different sets of, like, four liquid lipsticks that are literally identical, like, identical in color, identical in name, and pretty much, like, no, not identical in formula, but like the effect is gonna be the same. A matte liquid lipstick is a matte liquid lipstick. I think the velvets are slightly more wearable. Maybe they don't last as long as the matte liquid lipsticks for some reason, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that that was necessary at all. Honestly, I wish I hadn't swatched one of the sets because I could have just like given them away to you guys. Like to me, there's just no point in that. Um, I hope like someone else agrees with me and I don't get attacked for saying that because like you guys know if you've watched any of my other videos with Kylie Cosmetics about Kylie Cosmetics that I freaking love not only Kylie Jenner, I love the products. I have had some issues in the past that, you know, like, yeah, quality control hasn't always been there, but like 99% of the time I'm really into them. My second issue was the whole thing where it was like, it was only being released this one time, get on it or you're gonna miss out because it kind of made people who weren't like even sure about the products, who hadn't had time to watch a review, whatever, like very, it was like an impulse buy, you know what I mean? Which of course makes sense from a marketing perspective, but then like to release it anyways, a second time, saying you weren't going to. Of course that was planned, you know, it takes like a long time to remanufacture these things or to order more volumes or anything like that. I think that the Jaclyn Hill palette is a great example where they have to order more before they can sell them again and before they can restock Morphe anyways. So I just think like obviously this was planned, obviously a second release was in the works, so like why lie to the consumer? Like why make them feel like it's either now or never and they have to buy everything before they can watch a review like this and know like the full story? That's just sort of my thoughts on it, but I would love to know what you guys think. I would love to know if you are getting any of this. Um, I hope that you guys kind of liked my thoughts and maybe you're into some of my favorites and maybe you agree on some of the things that I said. I love you all so, so much. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you guys and I'll catch you next time. Bye.